Buy-to-lets can take you from beginner to Bezos as long as you believe in the basics. Say that 10 times faster. Now I say Bezos because if you actually think about where he is today, one of the richest people in the world, right? Where did he actually start? Well, first of all, it was a terrible little office. The desk was absolutely shoddy. His car was ridiculous. And he actually started by selling books online. And now Amazon is widely known as the everything store. Every person's success starts in a bedrock of solid simple foundations and people often talk about multiple streams of income did you know the average millionaire has seven streams of income it's like yes knobhead but you need to realize that everybody starts with one stream and that should start with buy to let so first of all let's start with what is a buy to let seems pretty obvious but let's cover the basics because this is what it's about. When we're looking at a buy-to-let property, it represents 21% of the UK housing market. We've also got 19% social housing, which is government rental sector. But if we think the private rental sector, what you and I might be looking at, this is where you have a house and you want it to be somebody else's home. And what we're essentially doing is making it into a good standard through refurbishment, typically. Somebody else comes in and they're going to pay you a rental amount for you to benefit from cash flow, which seems to be most people's obsession. But actually, the benefit is a capital appreciating asset over the next 10, 20, 30 years that actually has a proven track record of making the most millionaires in the UK through asset building. So that's a simple version of what a buy to let is. What are the benefits of buy to let? Well, we've covered it kind of already. The simple cash flow that comes in, making money whilst you sleep. Now, let me be clear. Is this the amount of money where you're going to quit your job? No, incredibly doubtful, if I'm completely honest, despite what a lot of other people say. It's really just a bit of pocket money on a monthly basis that can go from 50 quid to hundreds of pounds. But actually, you might not know this, some of the richest people in the world that invest in property, they actually invest in places like central London, where there is no cash flow whatsoever. They'll be losing money on a monthly basis, more than likely. Some of them even keep them empty because of the next key benefit, capital appreciation, or you might have heard of capital growth or property appreciation. This is where economics comes in, supply versus demand. We are this tiny little island, the UK in the grand scheme of things, where legally we're only allowed to build on around 6% of the land mass. We only actually build on about 3% of the land mass because the only thing we hate more in the UK um, compared to rising property prices is developers <laughs> developing new properties, which would solve the problem, by the way. But there you go. That's the English mentality. We hate everybody and then we, we hate them for not doing Doing what we hate them about. Moving on swiftly, capital appreciation is where it comes in, where essentially the value of property goes up. And this is through inflation being your friend, not when the money's in your bank account, when you've got it invested. Leverage being your friend, i.e. utilizing debt to grow that property, which comes in with the capital appreciation. And of course, basic supply and demand economics, like I said, which is when there's more demand than there is supply, property prices naturally go up until looks like that on the graph, there's an equilibrium. Moving on to number three benefits, debt. Now debt is so good, it's unreal, but I mean, I could do about a three hour video on debt and why it's your friend, not your foe, despite what you've been taught on your upbringing. I promise you, there is a difference between good debt and bad debt. And I am talking about good debt that is facilitating the growth of your assets, but it's also tax free money. So if you've got a bigger portfolio, let's go with a five million pound portfolio, but by the way, it's just as true with a hundred grand property, that will double every 10 to 12 years, typically. Okay, that's not every 10 years, but it will double. And then you can either sell that, pay a shit ton, yes, that is a technical term, of tax coming out, or what you can do is raise new finance against it. Yes, you're gonna have to pay interest, but the tenant pays for that because the rents go up over time, and it's actually debt-free money. Now, if you want me to do more videos on that, you could put tax-free money in the comments, and I'll do some around that. But those are the key benefits around this. By the way, if you're watching this and you're one of these people that you can only take in a certain amount of data, you need to see something written down. We've put together 
a very special guide on buy to let basics. So if you want access to this guide, you could check in the comments and it is all about boring vanilla <laughs> buy to let properties, which is my favorite investment in property. But we put this guide together just for you guys as YouTube subscribers, just for being here and watching the video. And some people learn differently. So check out the comments now. There should be a comment and we pinned it to the top. Click on there, download it. It's absolutely free, no catch, just to add more value. Of course, with every investment, there are risks to be aware of. Now, when you're investing in property, there are market volatility, whether that's interest rates, inflation, uh, something going on in Europe right now that could impact things. You need to be aware of the implications. In general though, property is a very forgiving asset class. What I mean by that is, let's say you love cryptocurrency, which whatever, um, it's a bit more like gambling in my opinion, but if it all goes amazing, yeah, we're going to the moon, making loads of money, or it all falls apart and it's gone. Money, zilch, done. And by the way, I'm talking from experience where I've had hundreds of thousands in cryptocurrency and some of it's exploded and turned into a couple of million. Some of it's gone to zero and I doubt I'll ever get that money back. Shit happens, only invest money you're willing to lose at a certain degree. But with property, it's very forgiving that if you have a 10% drop in property prices, people are like, oh my God, this is crazy. This year, properties drop by 10%. It's all the end of the world. And honestly, if you had a 10% drop in the value of your cryptocurrency, that kind of happens on a daily basis before my morning coffee. Really not a big deal. So it's a forgiving asset class, which is great, but it is something to be aware of. And then of course you have void periods where tenants not in the property. You've got a bad tenant where they're doing damage to the property some maintenance and repairs or a tenant's not even paying you. Now there are things to protect you against that but you need to be aware of them. If you want me to do more videos on that by the way just let me know in the comments and I can do more around that. So how do we get started with buy to let property? Well the first thing is do some market research. You need to understand some macro and microeconomics. Again if you want more around that sort of thing let me know in the comments otherwise I could bore you asleep for hours right now. But macro is big i.e macro where we're looking at the overall economy so for example, the UK is generally broken down into four sections of property or tenure of property. 30% of the open market is people that live in their properties and they have no mortgage on there. 30% is they live in the property and they've got a mortgage on it. 21% of the UK is buy to let private rental sector and you've got 19% social housing. So 30%, 30%, 21% and 19%. The reason that data is important is what what is it in your area? For example, if you're investing in an area where social housing is 50%, not 19%, that's going to be a bit of a rougher area. You might be able to get some social housing contracts, but you're really relying on the cash flow. Whereas if there's an area where that 30% and 30%, the 60% collectively of homeowners that live there is actually 80%, you're probably not really getting that much cash flow overall. But what you are very likely to get is really strong demand in the area and therefore very, very, very strong capital growth. Then we want to get down to the micro of the data of property in the area. What's the most popular property type in the area? Is it going to be flats? Which, if you've been watching this channel for a while, you'll know I'm not a massive fan of leasehold property. So I'm all for buying flats if I buy the whole block and own the freehold. But if I'm buying an individual unit, not really interested in leaseholds, I like freehold property owning the ground underneath. But it could be terrace property, semi-detached property, detached property. You'll probably find in the rental sector that it will either be a terrace property or semi-detached, or that's certainly what it is in my area that has that perfect mixture of capital growth, which is what I'm mostly interested in for my investors and me, finding great areas to invest in, and of course the cash flow as well, which is nice to make a bit of money whilst you're sleeping. Another big thing to be thinking about is how you're actually going to finance your buy to let. Now, I'm a big believer in the long term of property, but right now some people are worried about the interest cost, which by the way, I will be doing some videos on interest rates and how to utilize it to your benefit in the market. But a lot of people, because it's higher interest, go, oh, that means my cash flow goes down. It's like, yeah, it doesn't actually matter in the long term. Yes, you're not making 150 quid a month. Now you're only making 50 quid a month and you could go, that's terrible. 
but actually it's the long term. What's the property look like in 10 years, 20 years? What's the capital growth look like? And I can pretty much guarantee you in 10 years, the property price is not going to be as low as it is now. And the reason I can say that with confidence is look at the last 1,000 years since the doomsday book, property prices in general have doubled roughly every 10 years in the right areas, of course, which is why we come back to buying in high value areas. So you can buy cash. Um, I don't recommend it unless you're adding value and then refinancing or getting a new mortgage on the property. I prefer leveraging for a majority of people. Honestly, to give you an idea, right now, I'm utilizing the higher interest rates to get access to the best investment areas, which have been so unobtainable over the last couple of years from the sheer amount of demand. So what I'm actually doing is I'm willing to invest in a property and make negative cash flow. So I'm buying property, some that I'm actually losing money on a monthly basis, but because I know there's such high demand in the area, the capital growth is far outweighs that little bit of cash flow. I mean, think about it. Some people will buy an area that it makes £200 a month net cash flow, which in cheaper areas up north, for example, I know if you're watching from London, that's a bit different is decent with very low capital growth. So they're making two and a half grand a year. Whereas I'm buying in, in areas right now that are getting capital growth of over 10% on 150 grand property. So I'm getting 15,000 pounds a month, uh, a year, sorry, a month would be great. Then I don't care about the couple of grand cash flow. I'm talking about the compound effects. Now, that's my personal investment strategy that is not to be seen as financial advice because I ain't qualified for it, all right? But you need to be thinking about these long-term impacts of what you actually want to achieve in your portfolio. So could it be cash, mortgage, or bridging? You decide. Finally, you want to think about the management. Now, not many people talk about property management because it's not sexy. It's not exciting, right? We want to talk about buying it. But if you've got a long-term mindset, you want to make sure your asset is maintained. You wouldn't buy a load of gold or watches and then just not care where they are. You want them to be stored properly. You want them to be secured. And it's the same with property. You want somebody in there that's going to look after your property, pay rent, treat it like their home, and you need to keep up with compliance, which by the way, has over 100 points of compliance in managing a property right now. So I don't recommend you managing it on your own, but this isn't the video for it. But you do want to think about the long term management because somebody that's making it their home can make you money whilst you're sleeping on a long term basis. And long term, I'm not talking about the next six months. I'm talking about the next 20 to 50 years, dependent on your age. So that's been a bit of a snapshot overall of the benefits of buy to let, what it is, how you can get involved. And I like doing videos around buy to let because I truly believe it is the best investment you can make, not just in property, but in anything. So if you are new to the channel and you want to go deeper into some of those subjects, let me know what ones you want me to do more videos around in the comments, but also make sure you're alerted when the videos come out so you can enhance your learning experience. The way you can do that is simply by clicking the subscribe and the notification bell to make sure you're updated and as I said if you want a bespoke guide around this all around boring vanilla buy to let properties then click the link it's in the comments and we pinned it to the top click on it leave your details and I don't have anything to sell you off the back of that it's really about enhancing your experience from the YouTube channel because ultimately this is for you